quick tutorial showing how to do a panoramic render from within Max. Um, so I've got a little bit of a urban scene here. Um, firstly, I need to make a camera, so I go into Create, cross to Cameras, click on Target, and I'll just drag a camera in this um, in the plan. Select the camera and its target, and I'll move that up to an eye height of 1.6 meters. Um, I'll set this view to be camera 001. Um, and so there's two ways that you can do the panoramic render. The probably the slightly simpler way is to go across to um, the uh, utilities, which is the hammer over here, um, and look for either in this list here or usually. If it's not there, it'll be under more, um, and the one you want is Panorama Maker, or Exporter rather, um, which is that one there, um, which I've just closed because I already had it open, so Panorama Exporter open. Okay, so then I can just click in Render. Um, if you've done renders, you can open them with the viewer. Um, in here, Really the only, I think you'd leave all of the default settings and the only thing you might tinker with is the resolution. So um, you might do test renders at a lower resolution and then bump it up to something um, higher resolution for your final renders. Um, from there you just say which camera and I've only got the one camera so I'll just check that one and hit render. And that goes through and does uh, six renders. Um, which is lefting, looking left, right, um, forwards, backwards, up and down, um, and then it uses something magic in the background to stitch them together. Uh, and then it's done. Um, and what it should look like, um, this is a bit low res, but you should be able to drag your mouse around and be immersed in the scene. Um, from there you can then export that, um, so file export. For our purposes it doesn't seem to matter much, I think I was just exporting on the cylinders and it worked okay. Um, I think I'll just save it here as a JPEG. Um, it doesn't actually matter with this method whether you save it as a JPEG or a TIFF um, because it won't store the alpha channel anyway. So if I save that, okay, that will look something like um, just to open it up in here. Matching, presentation, renders, test pano, open. Um, so that will look something along these lines um, in here. But uh, if I go into select there's no um, stored selection. So that's the f slightly simpler way. Um, if we do want the alpha channel, um, it's, you would go do it in a slightly different way. You would go into the render setup. Um, in here we would, under common, we'd set our resolution. In fact, I think we just set it to something along it's the pano vision is probably okay. Um, presets. Um, we then need to go across to the renderer. Um, oh, the other thing to note is that we need to be in men, uh, mental ray. So if you're assigning a renderer, just make sure that's in uh, the mental ray render, not um, one of these other ones, which probably won't work. Um, so we could jump across to renderer. And if we pan up to camera shaders, um, the one we want to use is uh, change the lens and um, it might be hidden. So just click on there and the one we want here is a wraparound lens shader. So let's try and render that and see what it looks like. It's 
pretty quick to render because I don't have any lights or um, not, there's not much going on really other than a bit of geometry. So there I've rendered it off. You can see that it looks sort of like the one in Photoshop. If I save that, um, it is worth doing a, let's call this test, let's call pano dot tiff. Um, and here I get the option of saving a, an alpha channel, so I say OK, and then I can close that guy. If I open that one up in Photoshop, da, 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 that's it. it looks pretty similar. If I go into Select, I can load the selection. And then I can do stuff. Um, so I could make, um, I could invert the selection and delete it, and I could stick in a different sky or a photograph from the site or um, other things like that. Um, let's do a save as. Actually, I don't need to save this at all. So that's part one. Um, in the next part, I'll talk about how to put the correct metadata so we can use these as photospheres um, on Google Plus or load them onto your um, uh, your um, Android device with the uh, Google Cardboard system.